Question 18, let's check the information that's given. AOD is the diameter of the circle. Yep. Radius 9, marked. ABC is an arc of the circle. ABC arc. AC is a chord. Angle ADC equals 35. ADC, they're all marked on the diagram. Calculate the area of the shaded segment and give your answer to three significant figures. So that's all checked. If I'm looking for the area of this shaded segment here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do area of a sector O, A, B, C, the sector with that arc in it, the whole lot, and I'm going to take away the area of the triangle O, A, C. Now for both of those I need to know what this angle is in there, because that's the angle for the sector and the angle for the triangle formula. Now I do know what that one is because angle at the centre, as it is, is twice the angle at the circumference. So they've given us this 35 there. So that means this is 70 degrees. I'm now going to use that to first find the area of the sector and then the area of the triangle and then subtract them. So area of sector, area of OABC, which is a sector, equals, it's got an angle at 70 degrees at the centre, so it's going to be 70 over 360 of the area of the whole circle. So that's times pi um, times 9 squared, because the radius is 9. That comes to 49.480. Now the area of the triangle which is OAC, I'm going to work that out using the formula half AB sine C. But it doesn't matter that I'm not labeling them as AB sine C. What that effectively means, um, that area formula, is when you have a triangle like that, if you've got an angle there, that angle's C, and A and B are these two sides here. So that angle in our case is 70, and this one is 9 and that one is 9. So the area of this is going to be half 9 times 9 times sine of 70 degrees. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get 38.058. And if you subtract them, you get 11.422, but the question said three significant figures, so that is 11.4. Question 19 is one of those awkward third questions. It wants me to show that this expression can be expressed in the form as a square root of k, where k is an integer. It wants me to rearrange this into a format where it's one square root of an integer. To do that, I'm going to have to combine the surge at the top and then combine the division. Um, let's start by simplifying that top expression. We can only add surge which are of the same type, so presumably they both have to be root 3. Fortunately, that 27 can be written as 9 times 3 and I'll keep that as over root 2. Now, root 9 times 3, root 9 is 3. So that bit can be written as 3 root 3 over root 2. And now I've got the same type of surds at the top. I can just add them together. This is just root 3 and 3 more root 3s. That makes a total of 4 root 3s over root 2. Now, my aim ultimately is to get it under a single surd. So it's just k. So I've got to really put that 4 back inside. So I'm now going to put that 4 back inside. I'll take that down to here. 
and that's going to be root 4 inside the square root means I've got to square it so it becomes 16 times 3 over root 2. Now if I've got a root over a root that's the same as doing um, a massive square root over a lot of them. So that's 16 over 3 over 2 and that equals root I can simplify that bit and that comes to 24. I've done what they've asked. I've now got the original expression into a single root with a single integer and the integer is 24. It asked me for the value of k so k equals 24. Question 20 is an algebraic fraction because you've got the algebraic terms at the bottom. It wants me to add them, so this is where I'm going to do the common denominator and cross multiply. So if I, common denominator is going to be x times 2 minus x, and I cross multiply, so this side becomes not just 4 but 4 times the 2 minus x, and the other side becomes that's a plus 3, but multiply it across by the x. Now my denominator is in a simpler, simple enough form. I'm going to simplify as far as possible the numerator. If I expand this bracket to start with, that's going to give me 8 minus 4x plus 3x. And the denominator stays the same, 2 minus x. Never expand denominators or stuff if they're in their fully factorised form. I can simplify the numerator further because that's going to give me 8 and minus 4x plus 3x is minus x over x 2 minus x. And that will not simplify any further, so that's our final answer. Question 21 looks pretty complicated, but let's take it step by step. Let's check the information given in the question. Diagram shows a trapezium, A, B, C, D. Yep, that's a trapezium, and AD is parallel to BC. They're the parallel lines there. AB equals X, yes. BC equals X plus 5. AD equals X plus 8. So that information is all marked on the diagram. The area of the trapezium is 42. They haven't given me that on the diagram, so I'll make a note of it up here. What he wants me to do is show that 2x squared plus 13x minus 84 equals 0. Now they've hinted at the area is 42. Notice 42, 84 multiples. I'm going to find the area of the trapezium the long way. So area equals um, half base times, no, it's half the two sides added together times the height. I'm going to, that's formulas on the front of the formula sheet. You would always use the formula for the trapezium, not split it into triangles. I suppose you could split it into triangles, but it'd be pretty hard for this question. So I'm going to use um, A plus B over 2 times H. So if I put my values in, A and B are the top and bottom, so that's going to be x plus 5 plus x plus 8. I'll remove the brackets because it's just adding. But all of that is over 2 and it's all times h, which is x. If I simplify a little further, that's 2x plus 13 plus 13 times x all over 2. But this area equals 42. That, yeah, those two are the same. So if I use that as my equation, 2x plus 13 times x over 2 equals 42, then that implies that, um, move the x, 2x squared plus 13x, take the 2 up, equals 84 and so that implies that 2x squared plus 13x minus 84 equals 0 which check it's what we were asked for up there 
So that is a QED, I have done that. Now to calculate the perimeter of the trapezium, I'm going to have to add together these lengths. Before I can do that, I need to find what the value of x is, so I actually have to solve that equation. Even if I didn't get the equation here and prove it, I could use that equation given in the first part of the question. So don't give up on a question like this um, simply because you couldn't do the first part. Use the answer that they've given you. Whenever you've got to show that, you can use that answer in the second part usually. So I'm going to use the answer, use that thing to go and find um, the value of x. So that was 2x squared plus 13x minus 84 equals naught. I'll factorise that. I shouldn't have to use a quadratic equation because this is in the middle of another question. It'll be a relatively straightforward solution to this quadratic. So that's going to be x. I need two numbers which are going to give me 84. Now if I scribble them down in the margin, that actually could be 1 and 84. It could be 2 and 42, 3 and 28. This is actually um, got a lot of factors in there. 6 and 14 and 7 and 12. And I've got to go through those pairs and I've got to see which are going to fit in to... Um, this formula. Um, to get the 13, they'll give me the 84. To get the 13, it's going to be the middle one added to twice the outside one. So I've got to multiply one of these by 2 and add the middle one or subtract the middle one to go and get 13. If I do that, um, 7 times 2 is 14. 14 and 12, no way can I get 13. If I double 12 to 24, 24 and 7, can't get 13. Double that, 12 and 14, nope. Double that one, 28 and 6, nope. Here, double that one, 8 and 21. That'll give me 13 if it's 21 take away 8. So that's got to be a minus 4 and it's got to be doubled. So that's going to be minus 4 in there. And this one's going to be 21. Let's just check that. That's going to give us 21x, and this is going to give us minus 8x, and the total there is plus 13. So that's our factorization. So our two solutions for x are going to be here, 2x plus 21 equals naught, which means that x equals minus 21 over 2. That is not possible because x is not going to be a negative number. So that solution is not possible. This solution says that x minus 4 equals 0, so x equals 4. That's our value for x. Now we can use it to use a perimeter. I'm going to go back onto the diagram, and this is going to be 4. This one is 4 plus 5, which is 9. This one is 4 plus that, that's 12. I need to know this length. This length, fortunately, I can find by Pythagoras. If I split that into a triangle there, this part here is going to be the 12 take away 9, which is 3, and this height is the, the 4 from over there. So this hypotenuse is going to be those two squared and then square root it, adding them together. So it's going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, and that comes to nice... 5. So our perimeter is going to be the 4 plus the 9 plus the 5 plus the 12 and that comes to 30.